I'm Seth with Land the House. You're watching the Micro Hydro Series. This is the conclusion to the 10 part video series on Micro Hydro. I've uh, come back up here to the intake and I'm gonna walk down the whole system to the very end so you can kind of get a, an overview of what all has been done. For me, it's been several months. For you, it's been 10 videos. So let's go ahead and start up here at the intake. This is the box that I have created that has a screen over it. So this little rock ledge has made the perfect waterfall for my intake screen box to capture water. I still need to adjust a little bit of the back here to make sure I don't lose water. As you can see, it's happening down over here. But as far as self-cleaning goes, this will wash itself free whenever a big rain hits. And that has worked out really well for the past couple of months. So the box only has three and a half inches of catchment in here. Probably could have used a bit deeper to get that uh, water into these pipes a little better, but it's working. So I've got three inch and a quarter pipes coming off of this box. I used bulkhead fittings to get those in there. I may end up putting a fourth one to make sure I get enough water to my uh, barrel down here. So let's follow these lines. They come down here, a couple of rocks or keeping them in place. And I made a little bridge that helps to keep the, uh, the pipes level enough so that there's no dip here on this low spot. So you can see I'm still missing a good bit of water, a couple gallons a minute right there. Pipes come down here and then they enter into my 55 gallon barrel as a barrel intake. And this acts as a two different things here. It provides an air-free source and also helps prevent uh, silt and sediment from going down the pipe too quickly. So I've got a three inch clean out over here that I can pull to uh, get the water to uh, clean out of this thing. Got a cut off here at the top, which has been handy for pipe maintenance. And uh, I used just a single barb fitting here to go from PVC to the two inch poly pipe. And this little structure I made here just kind of allows a gradual sloping down of that pin stock. Has worked out well. I have two jets running right now at the turbine and there's not enough water entering into the barrel to keep that two jet system going. So I need to go down there and turn one off. Overflow will be coming out of this inch and a quarter pipe it also comes off the top, which I need to correct by putting a couple more of those pipes in so I can direct it back down directly to the creek. Okay, next let's go ahead and follow the, inch, the two inch pipe that goes down the creek. It would be most ideal if none of the pipe sections had any upward raises in it, but there are a few that may cause a little bit of a slowdown in pressure. But for now, it seems to be working pretty good. So I've got uh, 1,100 feet of two inch poly pipe that uh, connect by barb fittings. I'll show you one of those here in just a minute. But we've got it coming down the creek with about 160 feet of drop. Okay, coming up here is one of my first connections. So I've got the two inch barb fitting in here. I used a torch to heat that up, slip that on there, and then use hose clamps to keep it from pulling back out. I also kept uh, these bars here, this is Unistrut, and I just used some more hose clamps to make sure it doesn't pull loose with all of that pressure. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and walk down the line. Let's do a speed up so you can see just how long this thing is.
I constructed this little bridge right here to make it across the creek. It has a couple of little support pieces there and there, and it just keeps it at a pretty level but slightly downward slope across the creek. So water is never going to be washing that bridge out. And then it just continues on downward. We're down here at the turbine now. I have created a PVC structure here. There is a pressure tank that helps to prevent water hammer effect. A couple of valves to release some water. There's also a pressure gauge so I can see what the PSI is of the system. And then another valve here to allow the turbine to be stopped. Then I've got the housing which holds the turbine. Pick this up. You can see the turbine running here. Now we don't have enough water at the top currently, so I'm going to close this valve here. Slowly. Now the pressure is going to build back up in the pipe and the motor will spin faster. Now there is an exit pipe which comes over here and takes the water back down to the creek. Currently it's flowing somewhere around the 12 gallons a minute. The housing has styrofoam inside, which allows the sound to be a little bit less loud than it was before. I also used these aluminum bars to lock down the turbine, and that has been really nice for sound dampening. You can see some blue foam down in here. That has allowed me to push the turbine down into that foam and make sure all the water goes down and out the exit pipe here. I've got a little combiner box on the side where the wires from the turbine go in and meet up with this 10-3 ground contact wire, which then skirts along here 250 feet back to the house. The turbine itself is from Langston Alternative Power. Spencer Langston has been a crucial part of this build and install. He has provided the housing and the motor and been uh, extremely uh, generous with his knowledge on how to install this turbine. So if you're looking to build your own unit, definitely check out the uh, Langston Alternative Power. Let's go ahead and close this back up. We should start to see the pressure go back up from where it is now closer to the 60 PSI whenever the water is full here. I walked back down to the turbine and turned off one of the jets and this is the current overflow from just using one. As you can see it is pretty strong. Not exactly sure but I'm gonna say somewhere around eight gallons per minute perhaps. So it may be possible to halfway open a valve and get uh, more power but not use all of the water here. Let's follow the wire run here. We'll see it's 250 feet of 10-3 that goes back to the house. I know it's ground contact, but I went ahead and put it into this conduit for the safety of running over it or just damage, but it goes off that way. Let's skirt around over here real quick. We'll see it come out and go up under the road in this little wooden trough that I have built years ago. Curves off in here, comes up under the road. I will uh, bury this portion at some point in the future, but for now, it's just resting here on top of the ground. Makes a 90 up here and goes into the house. Comes out right here and goes to the rectifier, which converts the three phase AC to DC. Skirts up around over here. 
DC comes down into this breaker box. The red wire is cut and goes into this breaker here. White wire just continues down. They both come over here and enter into the Midnight Solar Classic 200. They then go, the wire then goes down here. The red one is cut off by this switch, which goes down to the battery. And the black one goes over to this side of the battery. There are five batteries total connected negative to positive so that it becomes a 60 volt battery in full. Then the wires go from the battery up to the charge controller, I mean the inverter, and that is done by red wire to this switch, goes up, and then black wire also goes up to the top there. A limiting circuit goes over to the main line into the house. I have a receptacle wired in right here, and so the inverter has power cable that comes down here and goes up into that. So currently we're making 78 watts. Now the input is low because the pin stock is not full of water yet, but when it is, we should be back up to about 170 watts. Batteries are at 64 volts. Once the batteries reach 72 volts, the inverter will kick on and it will start feeding power back to the house. So if I turn the screen on to the inverter, it's currently pushing zero watts and the house is using 477 off of that leg of the uh, power main coming in. And this is the last part of the install. So you've now seen everything from the top down to the bottom. I hope you've enjoyed this series. It has been a long time coming for me. I have started this about three to four months ago and finally got to the point where everything is working. Now I'm gonna be having a second series here on the channel showing my neighbor's install. We hope to get somewhere around 180 watts out of his system for a completely off-grid install. So be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell for the updates on that system coming up next. Thank you so much for watching, and if you would, share the love with Spencer Langston's YouTube channel, link in the description down below. And if you need a turbine, head over to his website, give him an email or a phone call. He would be happy to talk to you, and uh, we'll work with your needs, whether it's uh, uh, low voltage, high voltage, uh, for your high head, low head, or low gallons per minute, high gallons per minute, he works with it all. He also has uh, provided information on all of this stuff and batteries too, so definitely a wealth of information. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.